Hello, and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Photoshop Element 6 video tutorial. I'm your host, Jack, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube videos, please click the little subscribe button. This way, each time I put out a new uh, video, you will be notified right away. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this uh, exercise I want to create with you today. A very uh, usable exercise, I would say, and what that is is changing the background on one of our pictures. Now to do this, it's best if you shoot the picture on a natural background, be that white, blue, um, green, you know, a painted wall would be fine. This way it allows us to easily extract the person or pretty much or delete the, the background um, is a better way to say this. Let's start here. I have a, a picture um, of myself actually. Um, and what we're going to do is just right click on it in the organizer. We're going to go to full edit to start this picture off. Now, as you can see, I have a, a beige type background here. But let's go to first, view, and fit the screen. Fit on the screen here. Now, what we have to do first is, like I said, we have to select something to get rid of the background. Now, this will not work if you don't duplicate your background. That's why I said if you always get in the habit of doing this, just like I said, um, never to destroy your background, and also just to be in the habit of doing it, because then when it needs to be done, then you already have it done. Now let's go ahead and go over here, and we're going to select our quick selection tool. And then we're going to just start adding this background in our selection. So let's just click here. You can see we've got a pretty good piece of it there already. Click up here. And click over here, down here. We have a pretty good uh, selection already, but I have to add a little bit to it. You see where I have a shadow cast? And you'll get this occasionally when you're using a flash. You take a picture and then you pick up a shadow behind the person. Well, it's not very pleasing to the eye. It looks like, uh, sort of like I have a 3D head. So let's go ahead and get rid of that shadow also. Let's take our brush size and lower the diameter a little bit. Lower this diameter down so we can get in there. Then we're going to just start selecting in here. Just to start telling Photoshop Elements, you know, where we want to select. We want to also select in here to get rid of this uh, shadow area. And as you can see, it went down over the ear, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a minute. So now we're just clicking our left, our left mouse button and we're selecting. We're getting more of the selection down here. And we're going to select again. And again. Go up here. Select some of this top part. Get rid of some of this. And we'll just get rid right of here. That looks pretty natural. Now what about the ear? Remember I told you we have to fix that. We don't want to cut the ear off. That wouldn't look right. So just click up here on the minus where it says subtract from selection. And then we'll just click on the ear. And you'll see that the selection will go around the ear. There you go. Now the selection is pretty much around the ear. Take up a little bit more here and make it look a little bit more round. And that looks pretty natural. Once you have that completed... Go down here and deselect the original background. Just shut the indicator layer visible. See where it says indicates layer visibility. We don't want that visible. This is our background copy. Now hit your delete key. Right away you're going to notice that now the background is transparent. So now we can put anything we want back there. And to do that it's very simple. And I'm going to show you some steps where you can actually play with the backgrounds to see what you like best. Let's go up to select and deselect. Now you can see we just have the picture with no background. The wall is gone, the shadow is gone. We're good to go. Now instead of dragging this layer up, I just want you to click on this little piece of paper where it says create a new layer. We have a new layer. Now let's go down here to our gradient tool. Now as you can see there's some different color patterns already that you can play with. I like to do this just to start out and see what I'm going to get. Let's start with the black and white one. These are different ways that the gradient are going to be pulled onto the picture itself. 
Like, we select this one and go right here. Watch what happens. See what has a little star up here of, of black, and then the rest of it's all white? All right. You can go up here. We can do undo. You can go here. Pull this one down. You see it's half white and half black. Undo this one. And you could go either way. If you go, if you pull your mouse down, you're going to have it dark to light. And if we pull it across, we're going to be going dark to light. So you see it's just all based on how you pull your mouse around with these gradient tools. Let's go to something more pleasing to get you started out. Let's go with this one here. I'm just going to pull, and you know, I just practice play, play pulling your lines around to see the different patterns you get. And uh, we'll get this pattern on this gradient. Now here's our pattern. Now here's a problem. We have our new layer with our background. But we have the picture um, not being able to be seen because if you think of these layers as stacks of paper, this is a piece of paper underneath our paper stack, and this is on top of this. So naturally, it's going to cover it up. What we have to do is just drag this piece of paper or layer up on top of this one. Now you can see we actually put that right on top. And then this gives us our background. Now you can see we have a nice background. Now let's say we still want to play around. We, we don't know if we like that background. You know what? You could turn it off, and now it's gone again. Turn it on. Let's create another new layer. We can have as many as we want. And when you turn this layer off, if you turn this layer on and reprint that, that's going to be the picture you're going to look at. If you turn it off and print it, that's what you're going to look at. So you can do this multiple times. You can save it as different background styles. We're going to try a different one here. The blue one. Uh, we'll do this one this time. Pull it down this way. Now you see we have a different style background. Pull the picture back up on it, and there's your different background. Just makes it really interesting and fun to play with your different backgrounds. Now I know you're saying, Jack, those, that Granny Ant Tools is really neat, but I want just a solid background color. All right, let's go create a new background. Get our paint bucket. Go down here and pick a color. You know, you want something to justify the blue shirt to bring that out a little bit. So maybe we want to do like a, oh, that's too pinkish looking. Let's do like a reddish color. There we go. And you could just simply paint on that layer. It's still a little pink, but you'll get the idea. And there you go. Now here's what also is neat. If we click back on this layer to work on the layer, what we can do is actually put a pattern on that. And this is done with filters and then texture. Let's go down to textures and uh, we're going to actually add a texture to this background layer. And these are different style textures. And I know that's showing it kind of big there. Uh, let's see if I can shrink this down for you real quick before the recording, before we run out of time. Um, there you go. So these are different textures you can actually grab here. There's a pretty cool texture. You know, when you take a picture or take your picture in a studio, they're going to have different textures on their backgrounds. We can lower this tile size, make it a little tighter. We can group them a little differently. Or, I mean, the grout. See how the grout's getting deeper and deeper? Let's make the grout size a little smaller. And then click OK. And now it's going to apply that actual tile size to our background. Once we get that completed, we should uh, be good to go. There you go. Now you see we have a nice textured background. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, study on changing backgrounds. And if you have any questions, please email me. It's jackstechcorner at gmail.com. Or, like a lot of you have already done, leave me comments on YouTube. Uh, please comment on the videos and please rate them. That helps a lot uh, to get our videos shown to more people. So until next time, take care, keep snapping those cameras, and keep editing. I'll see you next time.